All right. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you all so much for being here, and thank you to the organizers for inviting uh, myself and Tanya to speak today uh, and for the incredible work that you do every week. Um, it's also really nice to see Matt here and people from BOT. So, um, Okay, so uh, my colleague Tanya and I today will be talking to you about a few things that we do at the clerk's office. Um, she'll be focusing on a few things, on a few of the larger initiatives that we've been involved in in the last few years, and then I'll be focusing on one specific application that we developed last year. Uh, but before we do that, I'm going to just give you a quick overview of the work that we do in the clerk's office. So as many of you know, we run elections in suburban Cook County. Uh, but in addition to that, we have a real estate and tax services department that calculates property tax rates uh, for, suburb for the entire county, uh, and we maintain and create the legal tax districts and boundaries and maps. They do incredible work in that department. Unfortunately, we don't have that much time today to talk about that. Uh, we also run vital records for the county, birth, death, and marriage certificates, and we also deal with ethics filings, lobbyists, and statements of economic interests. But today, we're going to be focusing on uh, some of the work that we do in elections. Um, Blue is the city of Chicago. It has its own uh, board of elections. We administer elections for suburban Cook County, which has 1.5 million registered voters who live in 126 municipalities, uh, but we also have 600 other elected offices, school boards, park districts, library districts, etc. This makes us the third largest election jurisdiction after LA and Houston. I'm going to pass it out over to Tanya to talk about some of the initiatives that we've been involved in, and I'll be back up in a few minutes. Thank you very much for the introduction. Yesterday, we had the privilege to honor the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King and the struggle of all of those who fought for voting rights, which is the gateway to our democracy. Today, the Cook County Clerk's Office continues to support the advancement of voter registration modernization to make sure voters have access to the election system, but also to limit opportunities for fraud to the system. Today, I'm gonna briefly review four recent data and technology initiatives advocated by Cook County Clerk David Orr. First, I'll talk about online voter registration. Second, election day registration. Third, ERIC, which is the Electronic Registration and Information Center, which is a cutting edge data sharing and data matching tool that's used across states. And then last, I'll briefly discuss automatic voter registration, which is pending legislation in Illinois. So Clerk Orr supported and advocated for online voter registration, which was passed into law in 2014. The state's online voter registration system integrates into the county's local voter registration databases, and it offers several benefits. So first, online voter registration is very efficient. It's very easy for local election officials to interact with citizens. It saves tons of paper, printing and mailing, so it's very cost effective. Also, online voter registration is very convenient. It's very easy for voters to log on from the comfort of their homes, use their smartphones at any time of day, and get registered to vote. Last, online voter registration promotes data accuracy. We're able to reduce the errors in data entry, and also standardize data. With online voter registration, it makes it very easy for us to collect data, track trends, and analyze performance metrics. So you can see here from this graph of online voter registration in 2016, we had really steady growth throughout the primary and then peaked in October right before the November election. So it's been very popular throughout Cook County. Another legislative initiative that Clerk or advocated for was election day registration. This was also signed into law in 2014. The main benefits of election day registration is that it encourages participation and reduces barriers to elections. It provides a safety net to correct registration errors at the polls. And it also streamlines electronic data collection and registration operations across the board. So election day registration was implemented fully for the first time in a presidential election this past November. Um, it was very popular with young voters in particular. So you can see here from the graph that between the ages of 18 and 29, approximately 34% of the election day registration participants fell into that age category. By gender, 
53% of females participated in election day registration and 47% of males. So this map, which is taken from our GIS data, graphs um, geographically the distribution of election day registrations by precinct. You can see from the red sections that there were some pockets that actually had more than 5% election day registration in those areas. ERIC is another innovation that Clerk Orr has advocated for and really led in the state of Illinois. ERIC is a data matching and a collaborative effort among states. Um, they use the latest data matching tools and technologies so that states can gather information from a wide variety of agencies, not only voter registration databases, but also motor vehicle agencies, Social Security Administration death records, and information from the U.S. Post Office. So once those states gather that data, the data, um, particularly that data that's sensitive is anonymized both at the state level and then once Eric receives it, it's anonymized again so that there are security measures in place. The states are given uh, special security uh, licenses and passwords so that they are able to upload the data to an FTP and transfer that information securely. Eric then produces reports so states can analyze the information and determine whether there are particular uh, inaccuracies or data that they need to cleanse further. The Pew Charitable Trust did a targeted study of Illinois and they found that 700,000 people registered at addresses where they no longer live. 34,000 deceased individuals needed to be removed from the Illinois rolls, 60,000 voters lived in other states, and there were 90,000 duplicate records. So ERIC is really an initiative to help alleviate some of these issues. It has been implemented in Illinois, and we're really looking forward to fully utilizing this tool in the future. So automatic voter registration is the latest innovation that Clerk Orr is advocating for. Uh, the Brennan Center for Justice did another study, and they found that one in four eligible citizens is not registered to vote. One in eight registrations in the U.S. is invalid or inaccurate. One in nine Americans move every year. And voters really mistakenly believe that their registration follows them whenever they move, but they really need to re-register the way that the current system is set up. So automatic voter registration is designed to correct many of these issues. Eligible citizens who interact with the government agencies are registered automatically unless they opt out. Agencies transfer voter registration information electronically, and particularly with all the different online systems, it's very seamless and saves tons of time for all the agencies involved. There are currently six states that have passed legislation for automatic voter registr registration, and we are really hopeful that Illinois becomes the next state to adopt this really great technology. So overall, um, you know, we're really excited about leveraging data and technology in the Cook County Clerk's Office. We're looking forward to ushering in a new digital era of voter registration and um, look forward to the future. So from here, I'll turn it over to Nas. So. Thank you, Tanya. Um, I'm going to move on and focus on a specific application that we just developed, the Running for Office Starter Kit. And this was a tool developed to help strengthen a local democracy in particular. And it was um, designed to solve two problems. The first is that there is little interest in local elections. Um, in April of 2015, 63% of the nearly 700 offices up on the ballot were uncontested uh, in suburban Cook County. Uh, there's a pattern of low voter turnout in 2015. As you can see, voter turnout in suburban Cook was just 14%, and in 2013 it was 19%. Um, but these local election uh, elected officials and the uh, districts that they represent control significant budgets. School boards alone in suburban Cook County um, co control a collective $5.3 billion annually in budget, which is not much smaller than what the Chicago public schools budget is. 
The other problem it aims to solve is that it's daunting for first-time candidates to actually get on the ballot. Ballot access is tough. Uh, it's for a few reasons. Understanding the requirements, navigating the process to actually file as a candidate could be challenging and time, very time-consuming. You can be thrown off the ballot for pretty minor errors like not stapling your candidate sheets. Um, competition is really critical um, for a thriving democracy, but this process uh, discourages it and it uh, keeps candidates very bogged down in challenging, uh, in, in fighting the challenges to their, to their candidacies, um, and it costs money. Our office and other election jurisdictions spend a considerable amount of time and energy uh, reviewing records from candidates who are being challenged. So we created the Running for Office Starter Kit, and I'm actually going to demo it here and then come back and tell you about how it's been used over the last few months. Okay, and this is at runningforoffice.cookcountyclerk.com. Um, so the way, uh, if you go to this website, this, this page, which you'll find on our website, um, it reduces the amount of time that a candidate, someone who's interested in potentially running for office needs to uh, get all of the information that they want to, to see if they should run for office. Um, I'm going to use um, Frank as our guinea pig today with his data. He lives in Evergreen Park, which is in um, suburban Cook County. And this only works for suburban Cook County, not for the city of Chicago. Sorry. So he's at 2705. So once you enter your address, it does a quick search and tells you all of the districts that are associated with your address. Um, and this shows everything from township down to parks and libraries and school, school boards, et cetera. So here's, here, are the, here are all the offices that Frank could have run for uh, in this coming April election. It tells him when he needs to file um, his, uh, actually it tells him the election date. If you click more information, let's say he wants to run for school board 124, more information, and it gives him plenty of information about that district. How many registered voters? How many ballots were cast in the last election? It links him to a map of the district or to request voter registration data, et cetera, and a host of other things that are going to be useful. And then it gives them information about the actual, about actually running for office. So how many seats are up this coming election? How many ballots, do, how many signatures do you need to get on the ballot? What are the forms you need, et cetera? And then if he chooses that he does want to run for office, he could click create a candidate packet. It'll ask for some of his information. All right, great. He accepts all of these legalese, which is actually very important to read. <laughs> and <laughs> and you, it generates the uh, candidate packet, and it downloads this PDF. Great. All right. So um, this gives him basically everything that he needs um, to, to run for office. He, he might need to make a few copies of some pages, but... Um, the first two pages are pretty in-depth instructions, and this helps you avoid getting thrown off the ballot for not stapling your sheets or not numbering your petition sheets. Um, it gives him his statement of candidacy pre-filled with all his information. All he needs to do is get it notarized and signed. It gives him instructions on how to submit a statement of economic interest, um, and it has the other forms that he needs, including the petition sheet, which... Um, is pre-filled, and again, now he can make copies of this, go get the signatures, he knows he needs 50, um, and then comes and submits it to our office. So with this, with this uh, candidate packet that he generated in two or three minutes, he can actually spend a little bit of time and understand what it takes to get on the ballot, rather than the very daunting and challenging process um, that, unfortunately, candidates had to go through before. So we released this in early October, and people were able to use it through um, uh, the filing deadline, which was December 19. And I need to go back to the PowerPoint. OK, so from October to December, 406 individuals actually used it to create a candidate packet. Many more must have uh, gone and searched and actually looked at the information. But this many said create a candidate packet, put in all their information, and downloaded that packet. 75% of them were for school boards and community college districts, 15% for parks, and 10 for libraries. Of the 288 that generated a school board packet, 207 actually filed with our office to get on the ballot. And that's out of a total of over 700 candidates who filed. So one third of those who filed the school board uh, petition with our office 
uh, used the tool. And 126, or 61% of those, were actually new candidates, not incumbents. And I ran a little bit of, uh, you know, I looked at the data a bit, and the, age, the youngest person to generate a packet is 19, the oldest was 79, the average was 47 and a half years old. So this, this is just one tool, you know, the most recent one that, we've, that we were working on. Um, and 15 to 20 minutes doesn't give us that much time to go into other things, but we hope to be back and to talk to you about some of the other work that we do. And I um, feel free to follow us, and I uh, look forward to talk to you after. Thank you. So, do you have time for some quick questions? Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Sure. Uh, First thing is, I think this is incredible that you're doing this. Thanks for doing this. Did you model it on any other, any other city or something like that? How did you come up with this package? This is something that I want to tell old friends about. That's a great question. Um, so, the running for office. I'm sorry. The running for office tool specifically, uh, it wasn't modeled on any existing initiative. Right at the same time as we were doing this, there was a national initiative called runforoffice.org uh, run that um, gives you pieces of, of what's here. It doesn't take you all the way to create a packet. Um, but this, this has been on our idea board for a really long time. I mean, we've, under, we've known that it's, that it's pretty difficult for people to understand the process of running for office and, and to actually do it. So it's been our, on our idea board. Um, and in the last year, we decided that we had the resources and the time um, to actually make it happen. Just, you know, Democrats have now a new thing for women running for office. They're a support group, and that's why I want to make sure you guys are connected to them. Good job. Great, thank you. Other questions? Uh, yes. Are you going to create a kit like that for Cook County itself? For, I mean, for Chicago? So that would be, uh, that's something that you need to ask the Chicago Board of Elections. We, we wouldn't be able to do it for the city. Um, yeah. Next question. Uh, when you were talking, you described a lot of really interesting voter registration uh, data. How much of that is available from the, the clerk's website for downloading? If you go to uh, the county clerk's website, you'll find a link to election data. And we have several um, data sources that are available for download on a monthly basis. And then we also recently issued the post-election report for the November election, and that has a lot of this data in it as well. I'm curious as you guys are going through and automating or digitizing almost every step of the registration process, including running for office, which is fantastic. I wonder if you guys have, have you thought about uh, creating a way to sign a petition electronically using data in the voter registration database? It's uh, a great question. Uh, my understanding is that that's governed by state statute, and so you need the voter signature, and then that needs to be compared to the actual signature on their voter registration card. Um, so. Uh, I, that's something that would be great to explore. Um, I'm not sure if that's uh, something we can do right now. There was a map that you showed with the density of people that used um, like registration the day of voting, and then also by yeah. age. Yeah. Is there a correlation between like those densities and younger populations, or is it just that those densities, like, is there any correlation between the other like? increases that you saw in that program? There is an interesting correlation there. That data isn't available on our website, but if you go into the post-election report that I mentioned, you'll find more information there. Hi. Um, I have a question about uh, hacking. I know this election in particular, there's been a lot of talking about, about uh, electronic hacking and, and manipulating election results. What are you guys doing to counteract that? Do you think that that's happened to you, and what are your thoughts on that? We've worked very closely with the Office of Information Security for Cook County. We've had meetings with the FBI and Department of Homeland Security as well. We've taken extreme measures to make sure that our data and voting systems are safe here in Cook County in Illinois. And I'd just add that there's no evidence that any incident occurred on, during the election last year. Um, sorry, how come we only have 2013, 2015, anything after that or not? 
Right, so the last um, municipal election for, uh, for these local offices was in 2015. The next one is coming up in April um, of this year. Uh, but there is information on our website, uh, election results, of course, for 2016, 14, et cetera, going all the way back to the um, early, I think, until 1998. Well, awesome. Thank you so much for yeah. coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much.